Okay, my second question, and I'm going to get off air so you guys can, you know, um, talk about it. So I'm going to tell you a crazy story that happened three weeks ago. Okay, because, you know, a crazy story. So, you know, obviously, I, you know, I quit my job. You know, I resigned. So I'm going back home because I don't know what the hell is going to happen in this world. And you know, just even my, uh-huh. with my mom and whatnot. So I was taking Uber to work. Okay, so I was like, you know, I don't know why the GPS isn't working because I just, I just take Uber everywhere. And so, you know, we get to my work, and I'm going to take a left here. Like, it's easy over here. So what happened was, um, yeah, I'm allowed to cuss, right? Yeah, you can okay. cuss a little but bit. This is a family show, though, I mean, right? Have you heard Wait, really? This is a family show. At all? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so I'll, like, I'll take a left over here, you know, because like, you know, I'm looking at the time. And then he's all, what the fuck is that? And I looked up. I was like, holy fucking shit, okay? So there was this huge, huge, like, vehicle that came down from the sky. It made no noise. It was black as hell. And, and, and mind you, what it was 8 fuck? o'clock in the morning. It was at night. There was no light. It was, like, not a silver sphere or a TikTok looking anything. It basically was huge. And it came down, like, you know, this is my Uber driver. So I'm like, I'm completely sober. I don't even do drugs anyway, you know? And, and he was like, what the hell is that? I just looked up and I was like, what the fuck? And then it came down, but it was huge. It was black and it had no propellers. It made no noise whatsoever. But the unique thing about that, because because now I know when people get scared and during the headlights, because usually I'm the first one to run. So I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like I'm, I, I, I will flee, you know? And I just sat there. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And he's like, what the hell is that? So for me to describe it, it was huge. And it looked like um, almost it it wasn't solid, like, you know, made out of, like, metal, whatever. It almost looked like a hologram. And it had a little tail on it, like a helicopter. Okay? And it just flowed down. It just flowed. How quickly... I got scared... How quickly did it descend? Like from where you couldn't see it in, to where you could um, see it? Like how many seconds took place? I, I, I think it took about like 10 seconds. Okay. So we had a good look at it, you know, and um, I've only told two people because I don't want to sound crazy, you know. Yeah. But it happened in the morning, which was weird. And um, yeah, so, so it disappeared. And then I got scared because it went behind my work's building. And I was like, uh, he, he was just like shocked. And I was like, just wait here for two minutes. I'm going to go in and pretend like I'm sick. And I, you know, I want to get out of here. Cause I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but he left me. He left like a frightened horse. <laughs> I came back out. Like he was like, yeah, he just took off. I was like, okay, now you're going to leave me to get abducted whatever, you know? And so I, I pretend I was sick. I was like, I don't feel well. I got a cough. You know, I just said I had a cough. And he was like, well, you better go home. And then I had kind of another Uber driver, which, you know, took 20 minutes. So I don't know what we saw. But my friend, you know, she graduated from Berkeley and she's an architect, you know, and that's one of the only friends, you know, that, that, that I told besides my mom, you know, my mom got scared or whatever. And she wanted me to draw it out. I was like, I, I'm not an architect. I can't draw this out. But it wasn't like the typical UFO. Like, you know, people say, you know, you know, it's like silver and sphere or TikTok or, you know, whatever. Was it, you know it wasn't like this at all. Was it triangular? So thinking, or was it like a triangle? It was like a hologram. Nope. It was, it was like a big black, the only thing that I would say, you know, it was like a helicopter because it had a little tail, but there was no propellers at all. And there was no noise whatsoever. And usually when you have something that big come down, like, you know, you could see the, you know, like, you know, the trees moving with air, but it was like silent. How, how far so away, I, I, so how far away would you say you were from it? Oh, it was like right above us. Okay. It was like right above us. And I think that's why the Uber driver got so scared. He Fuck left yeah. me. I asked him, like, yeah. stay with two minutes and I'm going to go back home. He, but he got so scared. Like, it was like, Arr! like, you know, he left. So I'm thinking, <laughs> cause, you know, I, I'm thinking, like, is this like, you know, or is it, because, you know, first, I'm not thinking it's, it's a UFO, because I think about the military, because I watch the military channel. I'm from a military family, you know? And so I, I know our technology is like, is, is like crazy, but they always, my dad always told me that, you know, whatever you see, you know, with the technology, you know, in the military, the 30, the 30 years ahead. Probably, yeah. not going to show the public. Yeah. 
So I don't know what it is, but I was thinking Project Blue Bean. I'm all, are, I'm all, are they starting? Are they testing? Because if, I think 90% of UFO sightings is basically military testing because I have a lot of friends in the military still. Very possible. You know, and um, so, okay. Hey, well, thank you for the story. Know, um, okay. Was there, did well, you, so did you, did you experience, show. real quick, did you experience any missing time? Um, I don't want to keep you guys on the phone that long, so. Okay. The, I guess I, I guess I'll be a, you know another call, but I guess the next time I'm, I'm gonna talk to you guys is you know after my move, so I'll. Well, know, good, I'm well, moving you know, to, to Santa Cruz. Well, good luck. With a whole bunch of, good luck. Have a safe so, okay. have a safe trip, and we'll talk to you next time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Okay. Okay, thank you for your call. Maybe I'll ask her next time. Maybe maybe there's more to the missing time thing than than she wanted to get into right now. But uh, a dark yeah, vehicle. That seemed like a, a dark know, vehicle distracted. descending from the sky, hovering, scaring the crap out of her, her and her her Uber driver. Uh, and uh, she had to call a new Uber. But okay. Hey, so um, play that clip. Go to the go to the time. Let me get this quick call. Oh, we quick. got a call. Yeah, hey, uh, call you on the air. Thank you, um, thank you. <clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? Who are we talking to? It's Jordan again. Hey, Jordan. You're out of what's your up, neighborhood, man? big city boy. Can we call you Falcon <laughs> from now on? If you want to. Falcon. Yeah. All right. All right. You're a regular caller. You're you're Falcon. I like that. All right. What's up, guys? What's going well, is on? Is that what you were talking about, Mike? Is you were going to give people names? Like yeah. you weren't going to let them have their real names? You were going to give them assigned names, like yeah. nicknames? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not a bad idea, Joe. You're Falcon from now on. All right, Falcon, go ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, I was going to comment on um, your previous caller. I've heard her before called, and... Um, she sort of had a similar experience that I had with my kind of really only UFO encounter that I can remember. Sort of kind of the same situation. It was in a car, um, but it was when I was a kid. It was daylight, and the UFO that it, to me, from what I can remember, looked like just a probably as big as a helicopter, maybe as big as a um, small airplane size, perfect triangle shaped UFO. Didn't make any noise, but it did sped off like a real high speed. I would probably say by the time I looked at it one more time, it just blinked out of my existence. Um, so I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. We sort of had the same similar different type of UFO, but it was the same concept. It was near a car, daytime or whatever, and um, it was pure black, no lights. Um, I couldn't even tell it was like made out of metal or anything that would be considered metal. It was just pitch black. Wow. So did you experience any missing time, and how long did your encounter last for? This, well, from what I can remember, I was in a car with my younger brother and my mom's boyfriend at the time. This is probably maybe a little bit 10 years ago. Um, we were, I mean, to me, we were stuck in a traffic line. Like, it was like a traffic on the freeway um, heading towards Atlanta, and I just looked on one side of the road, saw triangle shaped object come by and then it went on the other side and just disappeared when I blinked. Um, so I don't think any time sped away. Um, um, just, yeah, that was my, my only weird UFO experience. And then, um, the only other paranormal thing I could think of that ever happened to me was like seeing shadow people. But, um, I've been delving into that a little bit more and they kind of go along with either a poltergeist or maybe it was some sort of like entity I kept seeing. But, um, that was really like the only two paranormal experiences I can think of over the years. Was the the UFO encounter ten years ago? Could you describe the shape of that? It, it was uh, like perfect triangle. Oh, perfect. triangle. Okay, okay. So it's a black perfect. triangle. Black triangle, but it was a lot smaller than like the famous. Um, um, I remember the another famous. I saw it on um, Unsolved Mysteries years ago, but it was another famous sort of triangle UFO. I think it was in Chicago or Illinois. Um, it was sort of similar to the Phoenix Lights, where multiple people saw it, and it slowly traveled around in one area to another area. But um, 
like I said, the size of it probably as big as a helicopter, maybe as large as a um, small um, biplane. Um, but yeah, no noise. Had the wind. I had the window down and everything. No noise whatsoever, and the speed of it was incredible. Like, like I said, I barely even blinked, and it was already gone in my view. Just how fast it moved. Um, so, like she was saying, I mean, it could be. I don't know. I always thought, as growing up, maybe it was a U.S. you know special forces kind of vehicle. Um, but as I got older now, it's, to me, it seems like just a probably maybe an alien. Who knows? But. Um, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life, and it was like the only paranormal experience I've ever had in my life, other than the UFO and the shadow people, and that was about it. Oh, interesting stuff. Well, hey, thanks, right, Falcon. Right. No problem, man. Um, I was going to mention for the that COVID thing that you guys were talking about, that sounded like a 4chan joke to me with the whole butt plug thing. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure. Um, so I was just imagining uh, some commercial where it's like, if you like anal sex... But you spread COVID, why did you just plug it up with a dildo or something? Yeah. Next it was we'll, a horrible joke. We'll be walking around with counterfeit Chinese butt plugs to save ourselves from COVID. People oh, waddling yeah. around outside this of the grocery stores. This is a Rolex stores. butt plug. <laughs> ah, gold-plated butt plug, yeah. That's the way to go. Well, hey, thanks, right, Falcon. Guys, I hope you have a good show, and talk to you guys later. All right, bye. you think I am, Mr. Falcon. Boom. There goes Falcon right there. Can we play this last one? Yeah, we'll call her. You're on the air. Huh. Is this better? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Fantastic. Hello? Hey, hello? 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 <laughs> what's going on, buddy? Uh, not too much. I just wanted to call and share my uh, UAP experience uh, that I had a long time ago. Oh, I guess not a long time ago, about mm, back in 2014. Um, I guess I will... Uh, just kind of start off by saying the reason why I decided to call on this uh, specific topic was uh, that one lady that always calls in um, usually, and I usually don't like to judge people, mm -hmm. but uh, usually when she calls in, I kind of just do, you know, that Trump side, the yeah. one that you guys always yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, <laughs> uh, the more that I listened to her story, the more I started thinking to myself, I was like, mm, that sounds like what I saw. And now, so, just, just before you go on, okay. to recap, she talked about she was in an Uber and this black uh, object dropped out of the sky and it left her and her Uber driver kind of stunned for about 10 to 15 seconds. Yes, correct. Yep, that is the story I'm referring to. And um, she couldn't quite answer so, your question on the shape. No, she couldn't answer the question on the shape of this thing. So maybe you have additional insight. So please go ahead. Okay, um, so I will start off by saying I was up in, uh, I was near Shelburne, Ontario. Um, I lived in Ontario for two and a half years. I was playing uh, junior hockey up there. And uh, it was me and four of my friends. And where we were located, it was basically in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it was a hockey school. And I mean, we would bus from where we were staying, which was like the hockey school in the middle of nowhere. And uh, we would bus. It was like a 45 minute bus ride to like the nearest town that had a rink. So we were basically in the middle of nowhere. Um, and just from, you know, word of mouth, I heard that there was like some sort of air force base over there. Well, anyways, it was about, hmm, I'd say about like midnight, 1 AM. And it was me and four of my buddies. We were in there and, uh, I will not confirm nor deny that we were, um, partaking in a little bit of the devil's lettuce. Uh, mm -hmm. and so we were all sitting there and, um, uh, at first, like, we're all sitting there, and I was just, like, looking out, and, I mean, it's not really hilly or anything, and, I mean, there was, you know, a lot of pine trees around us, but beautiful night sky, no, like, radiation or anything up in the, uh, like, in the sky or anything that you could see. It was just all stars. Well, it looked like it was super far off in the distance, and there was, like, these, just, like, two bright lights, and I'm looking at them. And like, they weren't blinking, you know, just like how a plane would or anything, nothing like that. Um, and so I said to my buddies, I'm like, Hey, like, do you guys see that out there? And they're like, yeah, they're like, dude, that's, those are just planes. And like, they told me they're like, it's nothing. So I was like, okay, whatever. Well, then as time passed on, those lights started getting closer 
And I'm like, guys, I mean, look at this. Like, they're getting closer. They're not blinking. What is that? Like, they're perfectly spread apart. And they're like, oh, yeah, now I see it. Well, then a little bit more time passed. And as soon, I don't know, it was probably about this whole, this whole encounter lasted maybe about 10 minutes. But by the time it got to us and I looked back up, it was maybe, I would say, not even like a mile, two miles out. And it was wide. I mean, that's the best way I could say it. And eventually it finally, like, we're all just like watching it. And just like out of nowhere, it was just like, it went from one part of the sky almost right in front of us. And it was right above the treetops. And I mean, like we had all of our windows down and we're just looking at this thing and it looked like it was coming straight for our car. And so like, we're all sitting there just like not saying anything. And we're like, it's like, like, do you see what, but I see, and everyone's like, yeah, we, we see what you see. And so all of a sudden it was, I would say maybe about 60 to a hundred feet above the treetops. And the best way that I can explain it, and it gets to, you know, like the way that the shape is of this whole craft was that it looked like a stealth bomber, but it was, I would say about three or four times larger than the stealth bomber. There was no visible cockpit. Those lights were still on the tip of the wings. I mean, not making a single sound, nothing. And the only thing is, as it passed over us, there was this bright blue orb on the bottom of it. I don't know, if, you know, if that's like a weapon or what it was, but it was like a pulsating blue light. Like it was almost like a bluish purple and it flew over us. No wind, no sound, nothing. It was just like it was gliding and it glided right over our car. We all got out of the car and we just stood there and we watched it and it just kept gliding and it just glided off into the distance. And that was it. Fascinating. How long, how long did that entire uh, experience last? It was about, mm, I want to say like five to 10 minutes. If that, it's quite, it was just like, we just noticed it out in the sky and I was the first one to notice it. And everyone, like I said, no one was like, ah, you know, just don't worry about it, you know. But then as it got closer, that's when we all kind of started paying attention. It, and it sounds, we very sim- like, it sounds very similar to like a Phoenix Light experience back in 1996. Really? I'd have to look into that one more. But, I mean, yeah, yeah that's, that's my story with that. And, I mean... It's something that I'll never forget. I mean, it was massive and it was as black as night. And I mean, if it wasn't for those lights, like we probably would not have seen it even go over yeah. our heads. But man, I, like, I love that. Story. Yeah, I love that because it's very similar to ones you hear before with those huge black triangles, not the like stealth type, not the like tier three Bebo, but the big, big ones, you know, the the light in the center. The dark, like it blots out the stars and half the sky, silent over the trees. It's super similar, man. I've, I know a few people that have seen that. So it just makes you okay. wonder. It's so consistent, that story. Yeah, and that and that's the thing, too. And like even like, I mean, me and my fiance were driving back from her parents. And like, even before I even said anything, like I told her this story, you know, when we first met, because we got on the topic of, you know, aliens and ghosts and the paranormal and stuff. And she looked at me and just goes, that sounds like what you described to me, like, like the thing that happened to you. And I was like, yeah, that's almost identical. But the thing is, and that was what I was going to question about her story was, did she see that in the daytime? Or was it the evening when she saw that? That was the part that really, you know, kind of boggled my mind was just the fact that how did she see that during the day and then how did no one else see that during the day that was like what really perplexed me ufos that size like what you what you saw that's like an airship the the phoenix lights um and everything that i've i've heard uh and read about it that's like an airship super super big and there are edges that are defined there are some lights Sometimes some people recall like a, a power source in the center of it. Um, my uncle was uh, working at the Air Force Base at the time. Uh, he's like a, a former uh, pilot. And so he's working PR at the, the Phoenix, uh, at, a, at an Air Force Base in Phoenix during the Phoenix Lights. And he confirmed to me that his base commander 
uh, the colonel on base there said it wasn't one of theirs and they scrambled jets up. And that's what he told me. That's what they told the press. And um, I suspect that there are some, there are multiple different types of UFOs and military projects. And I think one of those projects is giant kind of stealth ships like that. Um, platforms, mm -hmm. basically. That very well could be one of them. But, but see, the thing is, is that like from a physics perspective, like, especially with something that large, like, it would have to have something propelling it. And, I mean, as far as I know, like, we only currently really have engines. And, I mean, that's the part, you know what I mean? Like, if, if you have an engine running, you'd like, hear you have to have some sort of exhaust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, pardon, that's, where, pardon that's, pardon that's where it gets freaky, and that's where it goes into this super secret technology. And they, if they got this kind of stuff, super powerful engines... Um, that are really efficient, then they could save the planet. You know, they could, or they could, uh, they could do amazing stuff with that power source. Some people rumored that it's a uh, rotating mercury. Like if you rotate mercury at a certain angle, at a certain speed, it produces some sort of uh, lift kind of capability. I don't know. These are those are all rumors, and like the TR three B stuff, like which is rumored as well, and the Project Orion. Um, I, I have no doubt you saw something. It's just kind of pinpoint point down. Was it made here on Earth or not? One other thing that I forgot to mention in my story, too, was that the fact that it wasn't... I mean, you look at a stealth bomber, right? And, I mean, I'm talking... I'm not talking about how wide it was. I was talking... I'm, like, right now, I'm specifically talking about, like, how... Like, like the height of it. I would say that, I mean, it was thin, that was the other part too, that like, I, like I said, there was no cockpit on it or anything. It was just that blue light at the bottom and it was thin. I would say no more than 10 feet in height. if that, and it was very streamlined. And I mean, with it being dark too, I mean, it's hard to see body lines as it is, but I mean, it was, I mean, the, the closest thing that I could describe it to is definitely like a stealth bomber. But I mean, the thing is, is that with physics, especially with something that large, it didn't move any of the trees, like anything that is flying like that, even if it's gliding, it's going to have some sort sure. of, you know, like wind coming off of it, or it's going to be, you know, exasperating wind below it. It's going to be pushing the wind off from the sides, anything like that. The trees did not move one bit. And it was at a height that, I mean, especially with something that large moving through the sky, it definitely would have made some sort of ruckus or it would have moved the trees. The trees didn't move. It was like time was standing still and just us and the ship were just like the only ones actually moving or just like watching this thing fly through the sky. Like everything was like almost like it stood still. It's not that like we lost time or anything. And I mean, none of us, I mean, weeds, weed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, no missing not like time. it was laced or anything. <laughs> like, I mean, people can make that and try to, you know, make that argument all day. But what what, is, what is year that, was like, this? I want to say it was like, yeah, it was 2014. 2014, not that long ago. Okay. Mm-hmm, correct. Right. And, I mean, it was, just, it was just the whole experience, I mean, itself, and it's just like, I, I think about it still from time to time. It's like, what did I see? And, of course. I mean, when that lady, I mean, and when that lady, like, brought up that story, I mean, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not the only one. And I believe there was another caller that yeah. kind of, I mean, I think it was right after her and he kind of, uh, described like the same sort of type of thing that he saw in the sky too. And I mean, it's like, well, I mean, <laughs> the, Oh man, you're I not mean, alone out there. The you're not alone. Or, exactly. You're not exactly. alone. And it's like either the government or some sort of secret agency definitely has some technology that none of us know about, or it's off this planet. And I mean, you're a fool to think that. Like, we're the only ones in, like, this galaxy or, I mean, just outside of this Earth. Like, only small-minded people think like that. I mean, if you want to be a scientist or you want to, if you have an educated mind or, I mean, if you want to know more, like, you have to understand and accept the fact that we are not the only ones that live in this universe or, you know, in this galaxy. Like, it, it's, it's, it's theoretic, they're theoretically impossible. Like, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Well, I agree with you. Hey, thank you for calling up with your story. It's fascinating. Uh, call in again, mm -hmm. definitely, sir. Thank you. 
Oh, definitely. I'm going to uh, give you a call. I still have to call you about those dreams that I had a couple of months ago. Definitely want to talk about those with you um, whenever you guys uh, have that uh, conversation again. Cool, man. I don't know if cool. you... Okay. Take it easy, man. Blow him up. Boom. If you want to join the Slack or Discord, give us an email at ourbigdumbmouth at gmail.com. Check out obdmpod.com for all the social media and donation links. Be a part of the magic.